Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. We're talking about the week of January 6th, 2025, this time around. So the first full week of January, but carrying us almost to the middle of the month. Uh, the week starts on the evening of the 6th. That's Monday evening. It starts with a half full moon. So we have a, a little bit of moon problem this week as the moon starts half full and heads toward full. But on the evening of the 6th, the 50% full moon slides right by. It's a moon, not a moo. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, slides right by the star Epsilon Piscium. So the Epsilon star in Pisces is a 4.3 magnitude star. With the moon that close, it's going to be hard to see that star. Definitely want to use your binoculars, uh, but it should be really close. Uh, I, I didn't lack. I didn't check to see if in some parts of the world it'll actually be a, an occultation where the moon will slide in front of the star. That's how close it is. The moon's going to just graze that star. Uh, uh, my time, middle of the United States, uh, central standard time in the United States, we're talking about something like 9 o'clock uh, p.m. on the evening of the 6th is that point of closest approach. Uh, get your binoculars out and enjoy finding that star in Pisces, relatively bright star. Remember, we see down to about fifth magnitude on a, on a decent night uh, with our naked eye. You got real good skies. You're in the high desert. You might see down to sixth magnitude. Uh, so this is, a, this is a visible star for sure, uh, but it'll be hard to see with the moon that close to it. Four days later, on the night of the 11th, 10th into the morning of the 11th, the moon will be 90% full. So it's going to be getting pretty close to full and it'll pass above Jupiter. It's going to slide over the top of Jupiter. Jupiter's big, bright uh, dot of light, the brightest object in that part of the sky that looks like a star. Uh, and so it, it's about five degrees, about half a fist width at arm's length uh, is the moon sliding over the top of Jupiter. Now, this, this, this close occultation, especially this one, where a, 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 an almost occultation, maybe an occultation, sets us up for the main event one week later. So if you watch these... Uh, little little films later in the week. Uh, next week, pay attention because on Monday night next week, the moon is going to occult Mars. We talked about this about a month ago, and this is a, a not a common event. This is something that doesn't happen all that often where you have something big and bright like Mars, and the moon's going to pass right in front of it and blink it out. So we'll talk more about that next week. That's the big event for next week. That next week's a good week. Uh, but that's the biggest event. This is practice for that. So get out and watch the moon one week later on the 13th. Be ready for it to, to, to head over the top of Mars. It misses, it misses Jupiter. This is what made me think about this. It misses Jupiter by a good half a fist width, by a good five degrees. It doesn't look all that close. And it looks pretty close, but it's not like, well, I was almost hit. Was, you know, look at that and say, well, that was a near miss, an almost hit. But it will hit Mars. This is a reminder to us of how the orbits of the planets are not all in exactly the same plane, or the moon, uh, for that matter. Uh, so we've got a, a width to the disk of the solar system, and so you see us miss Jupiter by a fair amount, but it's going to hit Mars within a couple of days of that. So this is great. Well, all of this is going on. We've been tracking Venus in the evening sky. You go out as soon as it's dark, uh, 5 o'clock in the evening, and you see Venus shining brightly in the west. And Venus has been closing on Saturn. Saturn's the relatively bright, not nearly as bright as Venus, the relatively bright dot of light to the east uh, of Venus, and it starts about one fist width to the east. So you, you put your arm out, uh, your fist out at arm's length, and you see about one fist width between them. It will cut that distance in half by the end of the week. So Venus is, is headed right towards Saturn. If it, if it makes that same distance again, it's going to be right on top of it next week. So stay tuned and come back next week and check. we got some big stuff happening next week. While all of this is going on, let's turn our attention to the morning sky. Early in the week, by the time we get to the 10th and the 11th, that moon is washing us out and we can't see anything. But before that, on the evenings of the uh, 6th into the morning of the 7th, or the 7th into the morning of the 8th, or the 8th into the morning of the 9th, we got a few days early week where the moon will set by midnight or 1 or 2, and we've got a morning sky. It still stays dark pretty late for those of us here in the north. And we've got a morning sky that we can enjoy some things. So let's start with uh, Vega. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Vega rises at 2, 2, 2 30 now. So by 3.30 or 4, by 4 o'clock in the morning, Vega's well up over the, the northeastern horizon. So you're looking to the east, uh, a little bit north, and you're going to see Vega come up over the horizon. And it's a pretty bright star. It's a zeroth magnitude star, one of the brighter stars in the sky. 
Uh, so we see it glow in there, and we can track on up 60 degrees, big, long distance across the sky. 60 degrees to Arcturus is the next big bright star we come to. Remember, we find Arcturus by saying the handle of the Big Dipper bends. It arcs to Arcturus. And so we can follow the curve of the handle of the Big Dipper and come down to a bright star, Arcturus. And we got about 60 degrees across there. Nice big separation. Almost halfway between them right now is... Well, always, uh, but in this orientation, moving up from Vega to Arcturus in this direction, uh, is, is the globular star cluster M13. Biggest, best, brightest globular cluster in the Northern Hemisphere. I, you know, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing Omega Centauri uh, in, in the Southern Hemisphere, so maybe someday I can do that. Maybe someday uh, we'll get to go to the Southern Hemisphere and see Omega Centauri. Uh, uh, but in the Northern Hemisphere, that's the globular cluster uh, that outshines them all, big and bright and beautiful. It's a little bit closer to Vega. It's about halfway between them, but it's probably 35 and 25 degrees uh, away. And it's a little bit above the line that connects them, a little bit. If, if you draw this line this way, it's going to be a little bit north uh, of that line. But M13 is big and bright. Your binoculars ought to pull that out. So you got your binoculars out. You've been looking at Epsilon Piscium and this near occultation with the moon. And you've got M13 there. Uh, it, it's scan across there and see if you can see M13. You've got a small telescope. Then go find a beautiful object. Beautiful object. Big, bright, globular star cluster. And about one fist width uh, straight across. Looks like it's straight across to the west now. Uh, is going to be M92. Uh, is a fainter globular star cluster, but still visible. It's surely visible in a small telescope, uh, but your binoculars can probably pull that out as well. So see if you can just scan. Start on M13. Find M13 on near the halfway point between Vega and Arcturus, and then scan across and see if you can find M92. You can do that with a, a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Do all of this in the morning of uh, the first few week nights of the week before the moon. Uh, gets uh, big and bright all night long and washes thing out things out. Uh, also in the morning, I, I saw it just this morning as I'm as I'm making this little video. Uh, and Aries, our marker of the summer sky, has crawled back around to rise. I was out six o'clock this morning, so six o'clock as I'm as I'm shooting this, which is uh, you know a few days before you're going to see it, or actually one day before you have a chance to see it right now. Uh, this is Antares was coming up there as the as the as the bright red star just crawling over the southeastern horizon at five in the morning. So appreciate that. That's our, our that's our you know in the summer that's going to be high. That's going to be marking the south in the summer. That's our no stars say summer to 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 us here in the north more than Antares. You know Vega and Antares and these are all great things. So so enjoy that. Now above Vega. If you go about 14 and a half degrees above Vega, so a fist and a, a, fist and a half up, so you, you see Vega climbing over the horizon, just go straight up. I was enjoying this view this morning too. I, I've had, I'm thinking about this right now because I've had all of two opportunities to see stars in the last 10 days or so, and they were brief opportunities, little holes in the fog and cloud. We've had so much fog here and so many clouds that I, I it, it, you know, it's imprinted on me when I get to see it. And this morning, a couple of days ago, in the middle of the night, there were, there were stars, and, and I was able to see brilliant stars then. It wasn't quite as clear. It was pretty hazy this morning and hard to see, but I got to see all of these things we're talking about. And above, above Vega, about a fist and a half, the next brightest star you come to is El Tanan from El Ras El Tanan, uh, the head of the dragon, uh, according to, to Alan, star names where we get this, so Arabic, uh, the head of the dragon. This is, these are four bright stars that, that, that mark the head of Draco, the dragon. And if you move up from El Tanan, to uh, Rastaban, the beta star, the gamma star and the beta star, 2.2 magnitude star up to a 2.8 magnitude star. So we're, we're making a quadrilateral, we're making a box here like this. Uh, the faintest of those stars is new, is directly uh, above in this orientation. As you go from Vega up to uh, El Tanan, go straight on up. The faintest of the stars, the quadrilateral, 4.9th magnitude new is right there. And you might need your binoculars to see it. Uh, it's getting close to the edge of visibility. It's going to be on the northern horizon. But it's got a companion star. So it's a binary star. 
And it's got a companion star that's a full arc minute, 62 arc seconds, a 60th of a degree away, uh, a separation of the two. That means your binoculars, you've got good binoculars, you should be able to see those two stars in binoculars. A small telescope's going to really pull them apart. So look for that. Now, one of those stars, they're both about equal brightness. So you should see equal brightness dots of light, almost equal brightness. The very slightly brighter of those two stars is a spectroscopic binary. And we've been talking about spectroscopic binaries, it seems like, almost every week. We look at the spectrum of a star, we see dark lines, a spectrum, where we've broken the light out into the component colors. And we see dark lines in the spectrum. Sometimes we can tell a star is a binary star because we'll see these lines red shifted and blue shifted. As a, as a star comes towards you, it's blue shifted. As it moves away from you, it's red shifted. But we've got two of these things going on simultaneously. So we see blue shift, red shift. We see these lines dancing around in the spectrum, a pair of them. And that's what we see with new. I, I believe uh, these spectroscopic binaries we've been talking about the last few weeks have had, had periods of about three days. This one has a period of about 39 days. So a much longer period than what we've been talking about, but not long by any stretch uh, of the spectroscopic binary of those stars. Let's just move on around to Grumium, the Xi star is a 3.7 magnitude star to complete the, the quadrilateral. And that's the head of the dragon. So enjoy a, a tour around. Find Vega. Uh, see if you can use Vega to find M13 and M92 as you move up toward Arcturus. And then go straight up. Go, go, go look to the horizon. Go straight up and see if you can find the head of the dragon up there. And the top part of the dragon, as we're looking in this orientation, the top part of the head right there, new. See if you can pull that apart into a pair of equal brightness stars uh, the, for the binary system. And this, that's what we got for you. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you have a great week and clear skies.